I think that's the closest <laughs> sound to this. This is so stupid. It's like, it's crazy. Uh, at the end of the day, man, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. No. <laughs> you, actually, you're totally right. So we have kind of a unique opportunity today. We're at Carter Vintage Guitars here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, your former employer? My former employer, yes. Drink. And um, we've got a, a smorgasbord of Les Pauls. So we're starting with ours. So this is my R9. This is my R9. Yep. Uh, it's sort of a good home base, I think, for both of us. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely our most familiar yeah. with, with the Les Paul, I think. Yeah. Uh, but then behind us, we've got a lot of, I'd say a million dollars worth of Les Pauls behind us. Uh, get, we're getting close, for we're, sure. We're yeah. touching on it, yeah. <laughs> we're knocking on the door of a million. But then we also have these. So this is a 1960. Uh, and I should point out that um, Carter Vintage will be selling this guitar in, in collaboration with the current owner. Uh, and all of the proceeds are going to go to a charity. The link uh, to the charity and all the information about the sale will be in the description box down below. It goes to help uh, a really great charity that builds homes and housing for veterans. And the sale is going to be happening on July 4th of this year. So this is a 1960. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that in a minute. And what is this? So this is a 59 factory black with factory Bigsby and there's no there's no tailpiece. So it came from the factory with the Bigsby. Yeah. So yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting opportunity that we have today to not just compare like and play and put our hands on the sort of holy grail of solid body electric guitars, yeah. but compare it to not just the modern custom shop stuff, but like this is a brand new classic. So what like this one is 2150. Yeah, 2150. So two grand. Yeah. And then we also have ooh, your Blueberry. That's right. So this was a gift from Epiphone. I'm gonna do some modification videos and, and use it more. But I, you know, it's a loud color, but it's a great guitar. So this is stock. Yeah, bone okay. stock. Great. And it, I will say, when we were setting up in here, you were playing this guitar through that old Gibson amp. An employee here that stuck his head and was like, "What? What Les Paul was that? What guitar was that?" <laughs> and we we're like, "Dude, Blueberry." Let's start by uh, by talking about the real ones. I mean, sure. There's no question that. The, the history on these things and the provenance and the collectability and the price is very well documented. They just have a very, it's the sound. It's, it, it is the sound. For guys like us, for yeah. players like us that like the stuff that we like and play the way we play, this is like the sound. There is something special, I will say, about holding a real one, you know, at least for me. I think it's, it's neat, just from a historical perspective, like the... This guitar has been a guitar for a really long time, yeah. and it's been well loved and well played. It just feels comfortable. It's something that you don't get with one of the new ones. Okay, so like right here on this, where the where you rest your arm. So it's not just the finish isn't just worn on the edge, but the actual binding is like rounded over. Right, and it's comfortable. Because you're doing you yeah, know, someone's doing this. It doesn't like rub into your skin. It doesn't like poke you. You know. I mean, they are they are not without their faults. They can be very difficult to yeah. play because of the, sh the small uh, frets. But when they're dialed in, it's an experience like, like nothing else. Yeah, and this one's pretty dialed in. It's all the pickups, the the central app pots. It's just, it all speaks to each other. Let's. I want to play that one for a okay. bit, and then we'll switch to the uh, 
uncovered pickups it's also the next this is a 59 that's a 60 yeah the neck on that one is considerably thinner than this yeah. one but this one just the the flatness of it is is pretty different but let's see <laughs> Yeah, they sound, they sound great. They sound old. They do sound old. To me, they're very clear and, and they have all the definition you expect, but they, they don't sound like a new guitar. What so is what, is a, what does a new guitar sound like compared to that? So, uh, with, what's interesting, this is a 58. So we have, we have all three years. We have the 58, 59, and 60 sure. to compare. All right, so I'm gonna play this, play okay. 58, and then I'm gonna grab just the Gibson, the USA. This one? The classic. Yeah, yeah, that one. We'll, we'll play them back to back to the same. Yeah, I'm sure. It's like guitars back and forth dude it's like do well you, do you have it you yeah, should have like a communication system i i if you watch me i mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> feels and that guitar feels couldn't be more different right I you know the bridge sound sounded closer right uh, and I didn't the neck there was a bigger disparity but I feel like with the bridge it's like oh okay I mean it still sounds like Les Paul and it sounds good yeah <laughs> Because again, now after hearing the two, I don't know that if, if I was like listening to you play, there's no way I would be able to tell that this was a real 58 and that was like a modern sort of reissue. Right. But when you're actually playing them, it's quite a bit different. There's something more alive feeling about that guitar, as it should be. It's existed in the world and it's been played. And I think that's a huge part of what makes the guitar have a personality. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the custom shop territory. So this is my R9, 1999. Uh, 2014, but modded within an inch of its life. And this one's completely stock. I haven't touched it. Yeah. So the thing I like about the custom shop is like, and I think we'll be able to hear, sonically, this is going to get, I think, 98, 99% to where we were with the real ones. 10 grand and under range, I would mm -hmm. say, for like a really great custom shop. You're getting well within striking distance of the real thing. 100%, and I, I think these guitars are 
easier to play. But I don't know. I, th- I think that sonically, I bet sonically we'll hear some differences, but feel-wise, we'll probably be more comfortable. Okay. All right. So we'll hear mine. Start with. We'll hear yours. <laughs> It's really good. It's really good. But I've I spent years tweaking literally everything. Do it's, you want to do you want to play the real one against it? Sure. Just set that on floor time. No, I think a big difference is going to be because this guitar I think is brighter to me sitting in the room, and I think it's. I think it's the output. Really, you don't think it has to do with covers? Well, I mean the covers matter, but I don't think covers are like this lifting a blanket off of your sound. Honestly, I feel like um, you don't you don't have to buy a custom shop. You don't have to buy this. You just find the guitar that you, when you close your eyes and you play, it gives you that sound. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. Is yeah. is not getting hung up on specs, but just the feeling that it gives to you. And for some people, this is the feeling that cannot be surpassed. But I, I love all these guitars, but I would take mine in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Of all of these real bursts that we've played, I like mine better. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that they suck. They're no. not good. I just, I like this one. I, I genuinely like what this guitar does. It speaks to me. And it's, it's the sound that I have in my head when I think of that Les Paul sound. This tool does the job that I want it to do. And for most people, when you're playing the guitar, it's how it feels in your hands, how it resonates. And, and like literally when we went from that guitar to the classic, it, it was immediately a different experience. To, so much so that I thought it sounded way different than it actually did in the room. Yeah. Until I heard you play it. Because when I was playing it, it was like, oh my God, this, this feels night and day, completely different. Mm -hmm. It's just the feel. And then when I heard you play it though, and I got the guitar out of my hands and just listened, I was like, oh, actually they're much closer. Yeah. Sonically. Yeah, we get so hung up on it has to be this or that, but they have to give you something back. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, you can play anything. Yeah. But but when you have the ones that really inspire your, like your, your mind to go places and your hands feel comfortable, that truly supersedes any price tag or any spec. So speaking of, let's play the Epiphone. Let's play the Epiphone. So, 1960. Uh, what do we, I mean, $300,000, $400,000 maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a lot. Six figures? If you have to ask. Uh, this is a 1960 model Epiphone, Les Paul standard in... Beautiful blue. In blue. It's very blue. So Epiphone was kind enough to give this to me. Uh, I'm hoping to do some videos about modding stuff and I just haven't got a, like the nerve to do it. But honestly, it's 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 a very blue. loud, oh, bl- very yeah. blue loud. color. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but it sounds really good. Yeah. It, 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 like, it has a pretty good neck on it. And I honestly, I think it's a really good guitar. But you have been singing the praises of Epiphone. Well, yes, like, but I should point out, I have not played that guitar yet. Okay. I haven't touched that guitar, Perfect. so we're gonna <laughs> do the most useless comparison ever. <laughs> Alright. 
I think that's the closest <laughs> sound to this. This is so stupid. It's like it's crazy. It doesn't. It's like uh, at the end of the day, man. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. No. None of it matters. This guitar is made overseas, modern, a uh, little homely looking, but sonically, it's a Les Paul. It's, and it sounds good. And if I heard this on a record in the hands of a great player, I would never ever consider that it was a made overseas, entry level guitar. Yeah. I mean, it, I haven't touched anything about it. I feel like the, the bridge could probably go down a little bit and I think it'd be even closer because it's just it's, it's kind of hot yeah but it just has that sound <laughs> and it, it's it's the weirdest thing it just goes to show that if it's put together properly and the ingredients are right and there's like the attention to detail is is there you can have a guitar that can sound exactly how you want it to sound without spending really any amount of money you could like anybody could save and have this guitar and be happy. I mean, maybe the color notwithstanding. I mean, it's ugly. It, this it, is hideous. It's you know, it's I've seen worse. Uh, yeah. But I think if it had black plastics, it would be, it would be a little better. But uh, I mean, I can't. This is bringing back the PRS memories for me. So I I can't. I could not. I'd have to like wrap this or something in like <laughs> final wrap to get to. I couldn't play the blue. Okay, so now you. Let's hear you on the the sixty. I think you're gonna be shocked playing that and then playing this right after it. It's, it's goofy, but you know what? If I showed up to a gig and said, I don't have a guitar, but don't worry about it. Yeah. This was there, I'd see it and go, what? But then if that came out of the amp, golden. Yeah. Golden. But here's, here's why this is a dumb comparison. Because the person who's in the market for this is not in the market for that. No. And, and vice versa. And no. that's why I think we live in a golden age of guitar. Mm -hmm. Because you can get something that's, it sounds really good compared to the real thing. Like someone who is on a budget or they're just starting out, like you can get a guitar uh, that sounds damn near close to the real thing for yeah. not very much money. I mean, to me, it's like, this just goes to show for anybody that wants to get into Les Paul thing, whether it's that's your first guitar or if you just want to have a Les Paul and you know, you don't want to spend an arm and a leg, you can, you can get it and be totally satisfied. And, and to touch on the whole tone wood thing, I've said this for years that there's no correlation between price and quality of sound or feel. No. That guitar sounds great. I don't love the feel. I don't love the finish. Like the, the polyurethane finish is a, kind of a bummer to me, but dude, I would take a scotch bright pad to the back mm -hmm. of that neck and, and, and sand it down a little bit. I'd have a great feeling playing sounding guitar for well over under a thousand bucks. And oh. that's a particularly good one because the ingredients are there. It's put together well. I think it's a good piece of mahogany. It just does what it needs to do. It's, wow. I'm glad we ended with, with this because that is, uh, that's pretty, I think it'll be eye opening for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if this is what you're into and this is what you're after, get it, get it. It's, it's really great. And it is a piece of history. Yeah. So there you go. I'll buy a burst for an episode. <laughs> Come to Carter's and look at them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thanks to Carter Vintage for having Zach and I out. We do a podcast together called Dipped in Tone. It's linked down below. Also check out his company, Mythos Effects, uh, linked down below as well. And your YouTube channel, right? Yes, Mythos Pedals. Yeah, and Carter's YouTube channel uh, is down there as well. And if you are interested, this guitar is going on sale July 4th of this year, and it's going to a great cause. This guitar has been played, it's been loved, and uh, yeah, if you're in the market, it's a good one, and it goes to a good cause. So we'll have links to all that stuff down in the description box below. Huge thanks to Carter for setting us up and letting us play, you know, close to a million dollars worth of guitars here. 
Uh, if you're in Nashville and you're interested in this stuff, you kind of have to come by here. So, um, yep. yeah. All right. See you on the next one.